Um, so hello everybody, my name is Kelly Wittick. I'm the Director of Health and Wellbeing at Westpath and we're excited to have you here today for the Health Flux Annual Election Educational Webinar. Today we're hoping to give you some tips to help you really make the best choice for yourself for 2022 benefit. Um, I do have the standard Westpath disclaimer to share. I'm not going to tell you what plans to choose today, um, but I am gonna hopefully give you some good information that will help you choose what plans are best for you. So we'll talk a little bit about annual election coming up around the corner. Um, I will remind you how to complete your elections online or by phone. I will give you some tips today about choosing the best plan for yourself or your household. We'll talk a little bit about health accounts and how you can use them to save money in 2022. And then we will talk a little bit about the dental vision and wellness plans that are available to you through Westpath and HealthFlex. So annual election is here. Um, remember annual election is your one opportunity to make elections for 2022, unless you have a life status event change. So this is when you'll choose your plans, whether it's medical, dental, or vision, or, or all of those. You'll use your premium credit to shop for the plans and figure out how much you'll personally pay. You're going to choose any personal contributions you want to make to a flexible spending or health savings account. And if you do choose a health savings account plan, you're going to make sure that you have the terms and conditions accepted so that we can put money in your HSA. And that's only if it's your first year in an HSA plan. So our annual election dates for 2022 benefits are November 3rd through November 18th. Of course, Alex Benefits Counselor is available now. So even if it's, you know, even if it's a few days before annual election, you can go ahead and use Alex to start thinking about what, what benefits you might want to choose for 2022. Making your health flux elections is a little bit different this year. If you've been with us for a few years, you're used to going through a different site. But this year, you're going to make your elections right from benefitsaccess.org. Um, and when you go through Benefits Access, you'll be able to find Alex. You'll be able to find the annual election portal come November 3rd. And you'll be able to also find more details about the plans if you are looking for them. So here's the, the, what it looks like when you sign into benefitsaccess.org. Um, if you haven't already registered, we highly encourage you to register before annual election, um, but you can register at any time. And you'll see at the top of the page, there's a little banner with a, a cute guy with a megaphone, um, and he's telling you it's time to make your benefit elections. And both the links at the beginning that say click here um, to make your elections and click here to get help from Alex, both of those go right to the annual election portal. So you'll be able to get to Alex or make your elections by clicking on that banner. And then you'll see up at the top, there's a banner that says annual election is here and there's a start here button. There's also over on the right side, there's a start here button. And so either one of those um, buttons you can use to, make the, to, to start making your elections. And if you look right behind my arrows, you can also see that Alex is right there in that same location. So once you get to this page, it should be really easy to figure out what you need to do next. If anybody has trouble accessing benefits access, if you're having trouble getting registered, if you can't remember your username or password, there is a way to log right into the portal through benefitsolver.com. You can either click register, or if you've already have a username and password, you can log in. Um, if you do need to create a username and password, you might need to enter your social security number and date of birth. And if it asks you for a company key, that's GBOP, no caps, it is case sensitive. So if you do need to go this route, here's the information it takes to do that. And then you'll get to that same location and be able to click on those same buttons to start the annual election process. If you are able to get there through benefits access, it's a little bit easier. Um, it saves you the extra login, um, but we wanna make sure that you are confident getting in no matter which way you go. Of course, some of you may need some help or you don't feel comfortable making your elections online. If that's the case, we do have an annual election support center and they can either answer your questions or they can actually make your elections for you by phone. Um, that's open Monday through Friday from seven to seven central time. And the number is 1-844-688-1375. And that's on your annual election materials as well. So whichever way you decide to go in and make your elections, um, we definitely want you to mark that on your calendar and make sure that you go in from November 3rd through the 18th this year. All right, 
Well, now let's get to those tips and tricks. Tricks. How are you going to choose the best benefits for you in 2022? Because when I think about what my best health benefits look like, I'm looking for benefits that will help me and my family be as healthy as possible um, by you know, allowing us to go to the providers we need and get the care that we need for whatever it is that we face. I also wanna save as much money as I can. So I wanna pay the least amount possible for both my benefits and the care that I need. I wanna assume what's comfortable for me when it comes to a level of risk, right? Whenever you're thinking about benefits, you don't know exactly how much you're gonna need. If you knew exactly how much you're gonna need, you might make different plans. So I wanna you know, only take the amount of risk that I'm comfortable with. And I want a plan that will help me be a smart healthcare consumer as well and really be engaged in my healthcare benefits. With HealthFlex, you have a choice. You have six plans to choose from. Um, some of them are more expensive and some of them are less expensive. And here are some examples. These are three of the HSA plans offered through HealthFlex. And the, the one that's the gold apple costs the most each month, that H1500 costs more each month, but then it has a lower deductible. And so when you go actually seek care from, a, a, from doctors and, and hospitals, you might pay less. The silver plan is the, the H2000, so that costs a little bit less and you pay a little bit more out of pocket. And then our H3000 is our lowest cost plan, so you pay the least to be on that plan, but then you are gonna pay the most when you go see services. We also have different plan types. So you may see in some of our materials, um, you know, the HSA, the green HSA plans, the blue HRA plans, the orange B1000 PPO plans. So those plans, you know, they might be priced similarly and they might have similar deductibles and coinsurance, um, but they behave a little bit differently. And so you want to think about both how much do you want to pay each month and what type of plan are you comfortable using? Now, all of our health flux plans work similarly in some respects. So all of our plans have a deductible, and during that deductible phase, you are responsible for paying for all of the cost of the services that are, are subject to that deductible. Then we have a coinsurance section, so then you're paying part of it, and it depends on which plan you pick on what the deductible and what the coinsurance is. But for all of the plans, they have an out-of-pocket maximum. And once you hit that out-of-pocket maximum, if you've had that many expenses in a year, the plan pays all of the rest of your covered medical, behavioral health, and pharmacy expenses for the rest of the year. So it's important to realize that all of the plans protect you with that out-of-pocket maximum. Now remember, when you're paying deductible and coinsurance, you can use health accounts. You can use your flexible spending account. You can use your health reimbursement account. You can use a health savings account to help you pay for that, um, for that part that's yours to pay with pre-tax or tax advantaged money. Some plans have co-payments, and those co-payments might be due either during the deductible phase or during the coinsurance phase, but never after the out-of-pocket maximum has been reached. So once you reach that out-of-pocket maximum, the plan will pay all of the expenses that are covered by the plan. But remember that co-payments don't count towards your deductible. Um, they do count towards your out-of-pocket max, but they don't count towards your deductible. There are a lot of similarities about these plans. So I, you, you may be thinking, you may be on this webinar because you're thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, how do I decide? This is so confusing. And I want to assure you that some very important things are actually the same, regardless of which plan you choose with HealthFlex. The first is, is that you can go to whatever doctor you want and you don't need a referral. So none of these plans, not the HSA plans, not the lowest cost plans, none of these plans require you to get permission from a primary care doctor in order to see a specialist or go to a hospital or get a test. Um, so that's really important to know that, that you have good access to care regardless of which plan you choose. Um, you have full access to the, either the Blue Cross or the United Healthcare Network, depending on which your plan sponsor offers. Um, so it's the same network, regardless of which plan you're choosing, and it's a nationwide network. So really broad access to doctors and hospitals across the country. You have the same medication formulary, regardless of which plan you choose. So OptumRx provides our pharmacy benefits. It's the same premium formulary, so the same drugs are covered, no matter which plan you choose. Now you might pay a different amount under different plans, but you can rest assured that if your drug is covered under one plan, it will be covered 
under the other plans. And the same is the case for other medical services. So we've had people say, hey, you know, I have very specialized medical needs. I might need some durable medical equipment or I see specialists. So I feel like I have to choose the highest cost plan because I know it'll be covered. But if, uh, if your durable medical equipment or your specialist care is covered under the highest cost plan, it's covered under all of the plans. So all HealthFlex plans cover the same services and the same medications. And don't forget, all of our plans offer super comprehensive well-being programs and incentives. All of your preventive screenings, all of your um, wellness exams, those are all covered at 100% regardless of which plan you choose. I mentioned the well-being programs. This is um, really a staple of the HealthFlex program and something that we're really proud of. We have Virgin Pulse, and you can use that to track your physical activity. I have my, um, my Buzz tracker on with me today. Um, so I track my steps, but you can also track healthy habits. You can do health coaching. Um, hopefully many of you took our Blueprint for Wellness screening earlier this year, and we have a diabetes prevention program, um, coaching, Weight Watchers, and more. And then don't forget, we offer up to $410 in Pulse Cash uh, for both participant and covered spouse each year. So um, these are great in things and they're part of every plan. So you don't have to worry if you select one plan or over the other, will you miss out on these? Absolutely not. You have access to these well-being programs no matter what you choose. And this is just kind of a highlight, um, Virgin Pulse. OMADA does the diabetes prevention program. Virgin Pulse now does the health coaching. Don't forget we have EY and we absolutely encourage you to in consider EY, especially if you're thinking about a health savings account plan. Um, our employee assistance program is a great resource, especially during these challenging times. Um, you have eight visits at no cost to you. You can do those um, by phone, you can do those in person, and of course now we even have talk space as an option, so you can do that um, via chat. Um, Work-life services, telemedicine, Weight Watchers, so just a ton of programs that are available regardless of which plan you choose. All right, so how do we decide between these plans? Let's talk a little bit about how these plans are different. So the HRA plans, the HSA plans, the, the B1000 PPO plan, um, let's figure out what, um, what is different about these plans. So the B1000 is the only plan that has a fixed copayment for doctor visits, for telemedicine, for urgent care and ER. Um, so I, I that that's the only plan that has like the $15 copay for behavioral health or the $30 copay for a primary care doctor. The other plans, HRA and HSA plans, you do have to pay the full discounted cost of that until you've met your deductible, and then you pay the coinsurance, so maybe a percentage of that, um, which is a little bit different. Um, but I I encourage you to take a look at your explanation of benefits and what those visits were, you know, costing on the whole, um, if you've been in the B1000 in the past, and you might find like for a primary care visit, that's only like $80 or $100. For a specialist visit, only a couple hundred dollars. And while that's more than 15 or $30 or $50, um, if you save a lot in premium, it's probably something that's at least worth looking at. The medications pay differently under the HSA plans than they do under the HRA plans and the B1000. So um, you're, you, you may have seen in our plan design that there's a copayment or coinsurance for medications. So you either pay a percentage of a brand name drug or a flat, a flat copayment for the generic medications under the B1000 and the HRA plans. In the HSA plans, everything has to be subject to the deductible, and that's an IRS rule, not a WestPAP rule. Um, and so you do pay the full discounted cost of the medication until you've met your deductible. But again, that's not necessarily something that you need to be too concerned about depending on what medications you're taking. Some of our medications um, actually cost less than the copayment. You know, so I'm, I'm on an HSA plan, and some of our medications are like you know, $4 for a generic. Um, and other medications might be, you know, 20 or 30, um, but that's something, again, if I'm saving a lot of money in premium that I'm at least willing to consider. And then mental health counseling is another thing that kind of behaves differently in the different types of plans. So I mentioned in the B1000, it's a fixed $15 copayment for mental health counseling. And that's true whether you do in-office counseling or whether you do a virtual visit with your provider. Of course, this is different than EAP. I mentioned EAP is no cost. And that's true regardless of which plan you're in. 
in the HRA plans, we actually have made this as generous as we can. And we say, okay, we're gonna pay, we're gonna have this, you just pay the co-insurance percentage, that just the, the 20% or the 50% that you are required to from the plan, and you don't have to meet the deductible first. And that's just because we know that um that clergy, lay workers, those who are serving the churches, you guys have a lot on your plate right now. And we want to make sure that the mental health counseling is as accessible as possible. For the HSA plans, again, remember I said it has to be subject to the deductible. It's an IRS rule. And so um, you do have to pay the full discounted amount until the deductible has been met. And then after that, the coinsurance starts to kick in. So these are some key differences in our different plan types that will hopefully give you some considerations when you're trying to decide between plans. I think we're good on questions still. All right, so one of the things that I like to talk about specifically related to HSA plans, but this is absolutely true for HRA plans as well, is you don't have to feel like, hey, if I don't meet the deductible, I'm basically not getting any benefit from this plan. Because we've heard people say that, and it's actually not true. Um, first of all, you have to remember that the plan helps discount all of your services and your medications. So Blue Cross, United Healthcare, OptumRx, they basically apply a discount to what the provider bills or what the medication costs, um, and that can be really significant. So I talked about that $80 primary care visit, and the billed amount is like maybe $250 or $300, but then my discount gets applied, and even though I'm in the high deductible plan or the HSA plan, I still only have to pay $80 toward my deductible. So that's a huge benefit that you want to remember you get to take advantage of. Of course, all of your wellness um, checkups, preventive screenings, wellness benefits are, are covered at 100%. So even if you haven't met the deductible, you're still getting that benefit. And then it's important to remember also that um, we have a preventive drug list, and I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a bit. But for even for HSA plans, if your drug is considered preventive, um, we actually will, the plan will pay its portion before the deductible. So that's a really great opportunity. We also, you may have seen um, that we are introducing a new way to use pharmaceutical manufacturer rebates, and that can save folks a little bit more money when they're in that deductible phase. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. So here is a, a big screen with a lot of information about the different plans, and I'm not going to go through these um, box by box. What I am going to say is I hope that you've taken a look at that that plan comparison document, which has this detail as well as a lot more detail about the differences between the plans. But some of the big things to pay attention to are the deductible. So how much do you have to pay before the plan starts kicking in for coinsurance? The coinsurance itself. So what is your share once you get past that deductible phase? And then what the out-of-pocket maximum is. And there are two things I wanna draw your attention to um, on these different plan designs. The first is, I hope you'll notice that the out-of-pocket maximum is the same for all of the plans except for the H3000. So $5,000 for individual expenses, 10,000 for family expenses for all of the plans except for the H3000. And the H3000 is 6,000 for individual expenses and 12,000 for family expenses. I want to call that out because if you're thinking about a more or a less expensive plan and you're nervous about what happens if I have a terrible year and I have to pay the out-of-pocket maximum, I want you to see that that out-of-pocket maximum is the same across five of the plans. So all of the plans protect you from those catastrophic expenses. The other thing I wanna call your attention to is the HSA plans and the family deductible. So if you cover family members in the plan besides one person, so if you cover two or more people, you always have to meet that family deductible. The individual deductible does not apply. So for example, I'm in the H3000 plan, um, I cover my family, and so our deductible is 6,000, not 3,000, because we cover because I cover family members. The HSA plans are the only plans that behave like that. The HRA and the V1000 plan, um, it, it, it's just the, the, even if you cover family members, the individual deductible applies. Again, the reason behind that is so it can be IRS compliant and um, also so that we can have the ability to offer a health savings account with it. And those health savings accounts are super tax advantage and a great opportunity to save some money on health expenses.
I mentioned before that we have looked for a couple of ways to make the medications in particular more affordable for HSA plans. And I, I shared, you know, HSA plans, those are, that's the only type of plan where you have to meet the deductible before the plan kicks in for the medications, except if your medications are on this preventive drug list. And I have a, a, a link here that shows what the preventive drug list is. I will, we will send the slides and the recording after the fact, so you'll be able to reference that if you can't jot it down really fast. Um, but it's important to remember that if you're taking like a generic antidepressant and you take it's on the list, so you have to make sure your drug is on the list. And Westpath doesn't make the list, Optimarex does. Um, so if your generic antidepressant is on the list, you could be in an HSA plan and just pay the copayment instead of your full deductible. So that's a really good thing to remember. Um, and you can, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the pharmacy pricing tool, but you can actually go and see how much your, your, um, medications might cost under different plans if you're thinking about an HSA plan. The other thing that Westpath is introducing new in 2022 that I'm really excited about is really a new way to leverage the rebates, the pharmaceutical rebates that we get from manufacturers to actually reduce how much you pay for certain medications at the pharmacy. Um, it's, it's something that's not super common in the healthcare industry and the health benefits industry, but at, at Westpath and HealthFlex, we feel like it's, a really, it's really important. And if we're getting um, financial benefit for the plan, for certain medications, we want to make sure that we're passing that benefit on to participants, those who are actually using the medications. Um, so again, in the pricing tool, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. You can actually see um, what the new price will be in 2022 with the rebate applied. Not every drug gets rebate, so this doesn't necessarily save us all money on all drugs, but if your drug is rebate eligible, then you could potentially be saving additional money at the pharmacy next year. All right, so just a reminder and some tips. Remember, you always want to think about the full cost and value of your plan, which means that you don't just look at the deductible, you don't just look at the coinsurance, you have to think about your share of the premium each month and, and how much of that premium is your premium credit going to offset. In some cases, your premium credit may be higher than some of the premiums of, for some of these lower cost plans. So you really want to think about how much do you pay to be on the plan each month, because that's part of that economic equation in terms of what plan is the lowest cost for you. The other thing you want to really think about is how much money is included in a health account with those plans. We have four plans that include money in an HRA or HSA at the beginning of the year. So when you're thinking about how much is this plan going to cost me, make sure you include that in your calculations. And then, of course, you want to think about your out-of-pocket cost share when you receive care. So the deductible, co-insurance, co-payments, your out-of-pocket maximum, those matter. But remember, the out-of-pocket maximum is the same in almost all of the plans. Um, and, and this portion, people often kind of over overemphasize the importance of this bullet compared to those other ones. They're really all even, and you want to consider them all together. And don't forget, wellness programs and preventive services are covered at 100% in all the plans. So if you or your, your family members are primarily getting wellness services, um, you may not want to pay for a very expensive plan um, when the wellness stuff is covered at 100% under all plans. I want to offer this, this example just to kind of illustrate what happens when you only think about the, the deductible and coinsurance versus looking at the whole equation. And so this, um, this calculation is something that we put together. It assumes um, a premium credit that's equal to the C3000 premium. So the C3000 is probably our second, uh, second, least, second lowest cost plan. Um, so let's say that your plan sponsor gives you a premium credit that will fully pay for that C3000 plan. And this is a family. And so I, we, we kind of had to throw together, what do we think this family is going to do in a given year? So this family has 10 primary care visits over the course of a year. They're taking 10 generic medications, and then they go to urgent care two times. So like not a perfectly healthy year, but on the whole, not like a super, um, a super challenging year from a health standpoint. So if I only look at the deductible and the coinsurance and the out-of-pocket maximum, Wow, it looks like that B1000 is a great choice for me, right? 
only $650 out of pocket. That H3000 and H2000, I'm gonna basically pay almost $2,000. So if I only look at that part of the equation, I'm probably gonna err on the side of choosing the B1000. But when I factor in the premium and how much money is included in the health accounts, the equation completely changes. And the reason for that is, is for the B1000, you are paying the most in premium and you're not getting any money in a health account to help offset it. Whereas the H1500, the C2000, the H2000 and the C3000, yeah, you're paying more in coinsurance, you're paying more for the service, but you're paying a lot less to be on the plan and you're actually getting money in that health account. And then for the H3000, since you're saving so much money in premium, you actually end up with money left over in your HSA in this example. Um, so I'm not telling you to pick, I'm not telling you what plan to pick. All I'm telling you is, is that you need to look at the entire picture, um, not just the out-of-pocket expenses to really have a sense of, of what the right plan for you might be. And, you know, look, it's, 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 there's a lot of, of information to take in and you know, hopefully this webinar helps, but there are other pieces there to help you as well. Um, we, have that, we have a little brochure that says, how do I choose a plan that's available on our website? Um, we have the plan comparison, which I think is super helpful. It lays out a lot of detail, um, but in a relatively user-friendly format. And we have Alex. Um, and Alex Benefits Counselor is highly used by participants in HealthFlex. Um, it, it's used you know, by, by some people multiple times over the course of an annual election period. And these resources are great to be able to help you make the best decision for you and your family. A little bit more about Alex, if you're not somebody who's used it before, Alex kind of crunches the numbers for you, right? They, so I, I showed you those examples with the numbers that we crunched, um, but Alex will actually look at your premium, your premium credit, and then Alex will estimate your out-of-pocket costs um, based on what you say you think you're gonna need in terms of care for the year and national averages of, of costs. And then it will compare the plan side by side and it will tell you which one might have the lowest estimated cost. Now, these are estimates. It's, it's just information. Nobody's saying you have to choose the lowest cost plan, but it's something that we hope that you'll factor into your decision making. Um, and if you're willing to say, hey, I could probably save some money by picking a different plan this year, we hope that you'll give it a try. Looks like I have some, some questions. Um, so I'm gonna take a pause for a minute and read some of these questions here. Um, so somebody said, they, how do they get a copy of the slides? And we will um, make sure that you have a copy of the slides as well as the recording as a follow-up from this presentation. Um, so in terms of the IRS deductible with the HRA and HSA, um, so there, there are, when it comes to the HSA plans, there are two kinds of deductibles to think about. Um, there's the deductible that we just told you, and I, I showed you, you know, what the health flex plan deductibles are. And you can absolutely use your HSA for any expenses that you need to pay up to that deductible, no problem. We're gonna talk in the future in a few slides about what happens if you have an FSA as well and when you can use that FSA with IRS deductible. So stay tuned on that one and I hope that we'll answer that question for you. Why does the IRS have a say in insurance? So actually the reason the IRS has a say in HSA plans is because of the tax advantage nature of the HSA. So the HSA is triple tax advantaged. It has a way higher limit for contributions than FSAs do. And so therefore, I guess the, the, the IRS is saying, hey, since we're giving you all this tax advantage, um, we're gonna set some rules around what kind of plan um, you have to have to be able to use that. So that's why they have those rules um, for the HSA plans. Um, is mail order and Walgreens are only options for prescription drugs. So for maintenance medications, so those are medications that you take every day, um, the HealthFlex plan rule is to, you need to fill those in 90 day fills and you need to fill them either at Optimark's home delivery or at a Walgreens pharmacy. And really it, it has to do with long-term stewardship of the plan. We were able to negotiate better prices for medications, maintenance medications by going through those channels. And so it's, it's our effort to try to keep premiums as low as we can 
we know health insurance premiums are high. And so we do what we can to try to keep them lower. But if you do need just a 30-day fill of a medication like an antibiotic or um, uh, some certain medications that can only be filled in 30-day increments, you can go to your local pharmacy for those. It doesn't have to be a Walgreens or Optimarex. All right. I'll talk a little bit more about the difference between an HSA and an FSA in the future, um, but we do have some great resources, including the plan comparison um, that, that actually has some good columns side by sides that talk about the differences between the different types of plans. If you're choosing the same plan as last year, do you have to make a selection for this year? For most, most people, no, you don't have to. There are a couple of conferences that are changing their default plan. And if they're changing their default plan, um, you do wanna make sure that you go in and make an active election. That is North Alabama and Greater New Jersey conferences. So if that's you, um, definitely go in and make an active election. My biggest encouragement of why you wanna go in and make an active election is because you want to think about making a contribution to a health account. So you can't do that if you just do a passive election, if you just let your election from last year roll over. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the benefit of a health account and why you wanna go in and make that each year. All right, individual help for a selection, I would encourage you to either use Alex or, um, or call our annual election support line if you need individual assistance. All right, I have some Medicare questions and I'm gonna hold off on those for now. Um, and we may get to those at the end or we may, um, we may do those um, as a follow-up after the event. All right, so one of the questions we hear sometimes about Alex is, does Alex always recommend the H3000? So I gave you that last example. And of course the H3000 was the, um, the lowest cost plan when you factored everything in. So does Alex always recommend that? And the answer is no, but it does recommend it a lot, um, a lot of the time. And HSA plans in general get recommended about three quarters of the time. So if that makes you nervous, I, what I want to share with you now is a de-identified analysis that Westpath did in partnership with Willis Towers Watson, where we looked at actual 2019 claim costs. So actual claims that people did in 2019, and again, they were all de-identified. So I don't know which line is Kelly Wittick, um, but I, but my, my information is factored in there. Um, and then we looked at the 2021 premiums and plan designs. And so we plugged those in and we said, okay, which based on these actual claims in 2019, um, which plan would have been the lowest cost plan for each of the people, each of the 10,000 people in HealthLex? And we saw that more than half of the time, based on actual claims, that the lowest cost plan would have been the H3000. And again, those HSA plans are typically the lowest cost plans for folks. And the B1000 is the lowest cost plan less than 1% of the time. I'm not telling you which plan to choose. I'm gonna say that again. Um, there is no best plan. There's only the best plan for you. But if you're trying to save the most money possible in 2022, I encourage you to at least take a look at the HSA plans and take a look at Alex. I mentioned before that OptimaRx has a drug pricing tool. So if you have been in an HRA or HSA plan, or I'm sorry, an HRA or the B1000 plan, and you're like, I am really nervous about having to face the full cost of my medication under an HSA plan. What does that even look like for my medications? We actually have a tool that allows you to enter your medications and it will give you a pricing estimate under each plan type. So if you wanna you know, estimate your prices under the plan that you're in today and then say, hey, but what if I consider that H2000? What, what will my medications look like for that? It will actually help you estimate those. Some medications that require prior authorization are not in the pricing tool, um, but the pricing tool also includes that rebate offset that I mentioned before. So that's pretty exciting and a really great tool. You get to this, you can either use that direct URL or if you want to go the easy route, which is the route I always like to take when it comes to remembering where to find tools. If you go in like you're gonna make the annual election or in like you're gonna go find Alex and just scroll down a little past Alex on the page, you will find the OptumRx drug pricing tool. So 
To us, a successful annual election doesn't mean that you choose the H3000. It means that you picked a plan and you understand the plan you picked and that you understand the choice you made, but you also understand the five choices you didn't make when it comes to these plans. Um, and that is our manager of benefit education is the one who said that first. And I love the idea because I want you to know what it is that you're leaving on the table if you choose not to elect some of these other plans. Um, one of the questions we had is, can I open a self-funded HSA account if you're in a B1000? And the answer to that is no, and it goes back to those IRS rules. In order to contribute to a health savings account, you have to be in a qualified high deductible plan. And the only health flux plans that are qualified high deductible plans are those HSA plans. Um, Somebody asked about if these plans are the retiree plans, not the active plans. So these are the pre-65 plans. So they are primarily, um, primarily active employees, but if you are a pre-65 retiree, then these would be the plans that you would potentially have access to as well. If you are a post-65 retiree and in our Medicare offerings, then that is with VIA benefits and you may not wanna to listen to this unless you have family members that are under 65 and on our plans. Um, is there an age limit for children under the family plan? It is 26. Um, so the, the, that is the age limit for children. Um, in One of the questions is about Alex and chiropractor visits. Should you enter those as an additional doctor visit for the year? I would enter it either as a doctor or a therapy visit. I think that that's probably um, close. And, and I, I mean, I haven't been to the chiropractor in years, but I would imagine that um, a chiropractor probably bills similarly to a primary care doctor. All right, let's see if they have any question, any other questions. So the premiums and premium credits for the plans differ depending on which conference or plan sponsor you're with. Alex does know what your premiums and premium credits are, so that's a great place to go. Um, but if you don't wanna go to Alex, um, I would encourage you to talk to your plan sponsor, so either your benefits office or your HR department, to try to get your details for what your premiums and your premium credits are. Um, again, a few more Medicare questions. I am going to um, I am going to follow up with those Medicare questions at a later date. Well, a later time or a later date. All right, I am going to move on to health accounts and and just ask the question you know, why should I put my own money in an HSA or FSA? We all have, you know, plenty of things that we can spend our money on um, that we get from our paycheck. So why would we want to pull out money from our paycheck and put it in a health savings account or a flexible spending account? First of all, it helps you save money this year, or in this case, in 2022 because you can use that money in the FSA or HSA to pay medical bills, which means that you are paying medical bills with pre-tax money instead of post-tax money. And therefore you're saving whatever you would have normally paid in taxes on that amount in 2022. What I really like about health accounts is that the funds are accumulated. So when I need them, especially if I have an unexpected expense, I have the money right there. I can pay the bill and I don't have to worry about where I'm going to come up with the money. Do I have to dip into savings? Do I have to put it on a credit card? So if you have an unexpected expense or even an expected expense and you have a pot of money that's designated for healthcare, then you know you can pay that expense right away. And just knowing how you know medical and healthcare bankruptcy can impact people in this country, I think having a plan for me medical expenses, either expected or unexpected, is a great way to provide yourself with greater financial security. And you can save for future expenses. And this is particularly true for the health savings account. Um, so the health savings account is yours. Um, you can roll over an, an, an infinite, well, not infinite, because you probably don't have infinite money in your HSA, but however much money you have in your HSA, you can roll it over to next year and next year and next year and next year. And it's always yours. You don't have to worry about, you know, if you terminate from the plan that you forfeit the money, HSA money is always yours. So you could use that to save for like the knee surgery that you're gonna have in three years or the orthodontics that you're expecting down the road, or you could save it to like to eventually save for healthcare expenses and retirement. And there are estimates that say that healthcare expenses and retirements can be upwards of $300,000 for a couple. So 
having having some money set aside for healthcare expenses in the future is a great way to improve your financial security. And I do want to point out that almost anyone can benefit from contributing to an HSA or an FSA um, because when we looked back, 95% of our HealthFlex participants had at least $300 in healthcare expenses. And $300 is the minimum contribution for an FSA. There's no minimum contribution for an HSA. So almost anybody can benefit from this tax advantage. The HSA also has a triple tax advantage, and that means that the money that you put in, you don't pay taxes on, it can grow. So depending on how you decide to use it, you can either get interest or dividends on that HSA contribution, um, and that grows tax-free. And as long as you use it for health expenses, you it, it's tax-free when you take it out. So that's what's the triple tax advantage. And so it's definitely why we encourage people to take a look at our HSAs. If you're trying to figure out how that, that 2022 savings works, here's a little bit of an illustration. So let's say that you have $2,500 that you know you're gonna spend over the course of a year in, in out-of-pocket healthcare expenses. So that's your deductible, co-payments, co-insurance, whatever. If you put that money in the HSA or FSA, that means you're not paying tax on that $2,500. It's going right into your HSA or FSA. If you don't put it in HSA or FSA, you're still gonna have to pay that bill, but you're gonna have to take it out of your checking account or whatever, and you've already paid tax on that money. So if your tax bracket is 22%, which is about the denominational average compensation bracket, you would save $550 just on 2022 expenses, not to mention the ability to save for the future. So it's definitely worth taking a look if you are not somebody who's contributing to health accounts. I highly encourage you to take a look this year. The maximum for the HSA, it varies each year. Somebody asked about that. Um, it is $7,300 for families, and I believe it's $3,650 for individuals. If you're, in an, if you're just you covered in the plan, it's $3,650 for 2022, and it's $7,300 if you're covering even two people. Um, so that's kind of when I said before about the huge tax savings benefit. Um, that's kind of why the IRS gets involved in the rules. Um, somebody mentioned the $2 a month service fee, um, and that was um, in the past for low balance, actually even in the present, but not the future, um, for our low balance HSA accounts. So if you have a low balance HSA, health equity was charging a $2 a month maintenance fee. We actually, excitingly, were able to negotiate with health equity to waive that fee beginning in 2022. Hooray! Um, so we are really excited about that. Um, it took me a couple of years to get past the low balance. Um, so I know that people, you know, might feel nervous about that um, it, when they're first starting out. So that is great news for people who are starting out. I would still encourage everybody to try to get past that low balance because really to, to grow and save that HSA for the future, you want to be able to accumulate a balance. But the good news is, is that even our low balance folks won't have um, that maintenance fee next year. Okay. All right. Um, we have a question about if you're still working and turning 65. Um, so I have, I have a, a handout that we'll send as a follow-up that I'll encourage you to look at. Um, but overall, if you're actively working and not eligible for the Medicare small employer exception, and if you are, you probably know or you will know because your plan sponsor will reach out to you if you're eligible for that. So if you're not eligible for the small employer exception, then you will remain in our active, active health flex plan and you'll, you'll continue as long as you're actively working. Um, there are some considerations as you're approaching Medicare eligibility about HSAs. And we have a separate document that kind of addresses that. So um, we'll make sure to include that in our follow up to this. The cool thing is that Alex also explains the benefit of contributing to a health account. So if what I just said didn't convince you or confused you, I hope it didn't confuse you too much. But if it did, I encourage you to talk to Alex because Alex will talk about the health savings accounts as well as the flexible spending accounts and give you some important tips. So I mentioned before uh, that, you know, if you if you think that the highest cost plan is the best plan because it has the least out of pocket, you may not be factoring everything into the equation. There's one more example I wanted to share with you just to show you the magnitude of how much you can potentially save if you've been stuck in that B1000 plan for a while. 
So let's say that you're in the B1000 plan, you've been in the B1000 plan, you love the B1000 plan, and you expect that you'll have about $1,500 in out-of-pocket expenses in 2022. What we would encourage you to do is to kind of consider buying down to a lower cost plan, but to take your savings in 2022 and use it to invest and put in your HSA. And that way you'll have kind of a bucket of money to pay for higher expenses and you might not even use it all. Um, and you'll be able to roll some of that over to 2023 and beyond. So here is an example. The average monthly premium difference between the B1000 and the H2000 for a family is over $4,000 a year. So if you put that $4,000 that you saved in premium plus the $1,500 that you were already planning on, um, on, on spending on healthcare all into the HSA, you could put $5,500 into the HSA. And family coverage in the H2000 comes with an additional $1,000. So you would now have $6,500 in your HSA based on what you're just gonna save over that B1000 in premium. Just something to think about. The same kind of example with a bigger magnitude applies to the H3000. So the average monthly premium difference um, for between the B1000 and the H3000 is over $6,500 a year for family coverage. So if you contributed that whole $6,500 in savings plus the $1,500 of what you expected to pay anyway, you would exceed the IRS maximum contribution. So you can contribute that maximum, that $7,300. It's what you are going to pay anyway in the B1000. And now you have a huge chunk in your HSA. And if you use it, great. You have it to help offset your costs. And if you don't use it, you can save it for the future. Just something to consider. Um, so this, this slide just details, remember I said four of our plans include money, and so you don't want to forget that. So the H1500, the H2000 each include HSA money, the C2000 and the C3000 each include HRA money. So you do want to make sure that you don't forget to include that in your, in your mental calculation, or if you're a paper or Excel calculator, you can put those in there too. This is actually in addition to anything you choose to contribute yourself to the FSA or HSA, or if you have excess premium credit um, in a plan, and that's most common in the H3000 plan to have excess premium credit. It doesn't factor that in. We do have two documents that we are going to send to all attendees of this um, webinar as a follow-up. And these are sort of like special HSA circumstances. So the first one I think would address a lot of those questions about Medicare eligibility. So if you are enrolled in Medicare, even just Medicare Part A, you are not eligible to contribute to an HSA. Um, again, IRS rules, not Westpath rules. Um, so if that's you, um, then you may not want to choose an HSA plan because you might not be able to take advantage of that benefit. Um, if you're getting close to Medicare eligibility, like you're going to retire, you're going to turn 65, this, this piece gives you some examples of, you know, what happens if you go mid-year or if your spouse goes mid-year, how does that work? And so we do some prorating to show you how that might play out for you. So if that's you, I definitely encourage you to take a look because I think that that could be potentially really useful. The other piece that we're going to share is this piece that talks about what if you're somebody who thinks you want an HSA and an FSA. Um, and there are a handful of people who want both, and my family is one of them. Um, but one of the things that I want to underscore is that if you're not going to contribute the maximum contribution to the HSA, you don't need an FSA. Um, because everything you can use your FSA for, you can use your HSA for. Um, so you do not need an FSA um, if you're not gonna fully maximize your HSA. The thing to remember and the, the, the reason for looking at this piece is if you do contribute to, if you do are in an HSA plan and contribute to an HSA, your flexible spending account becomes limited use at the beginning of the year until you reach a certain level of out-of-pocket expenses. And limited use means dental and vision only. So unless you have a, either a ton of expenses overall or a ton of dental and vision expenses, we usually don't encourage people to, to use an FSA unless they've maximized their HSA. But anyway, if that's you, we're gonna send this more detail to you as a follow-up. 
So if you're really using health accounts the best possible way, basically you're paying for your medical expenses with tax-free money. You don't lose anything. Remember, FSAs are often use it or lose it. Um, in 2022, it will be use it or lose it. Um, in 2021, if you have leftover FSA expenses, we will roll it into 2022 as long as you remain eligible for Health Flex. Um, I, what, what I like most about health accounts is it just kind of gives me that cushion for future medical expenses and things that, you know, I might not be expecting. All right, let's see. Do we subtract the employer contribution from the maximum contribution for the year? So that's for HSAs. And that HSA maximum, that 7,300 or that 3,650, it is an all-inclusive maximum. So it includes whatever is included in the plan. It includes your excess premium credit and anything that you contribute personally. So it includes everything. We do have a calculator um, if you on that HSA election page. We have a little calculator that can help you factor that in if you need, if you if you want that help during your elections. Um, let's see, somebody said, somebody, somebody, a couple of people have asked, which are those two conferences that are changing their defaults? So they're just changing their defaults. Um, all the same plans are being offered and I know that they've done a great job of communicating, but if you're in North Alabama or greater New Jersey, they have had their own webinars, I'm sure they're recorded and they are changing their defaults. So you may wanna pay closer attention um, to what they tell you specifically versus this more general call. Is there an FSA for dependent care expenses? There is, and I will get to that in just a few minutes. Um, hearing benefits um, are considered medical, I believe. So I think you can use, it, it, you can at least use um, use your your HSA for um, for the hearing um, hearing aid and the hearing exam. All right, can HSA dollars be used for dental and vision expenses? Yes, they can. I actually am gonna talk a little bit about what happens if you choose multiple plans, because if you've chosen multiple plans, maybe you have multiple cards. And I just wanna share that we have been working with Health Equity. We hope that eventually we'll be getting back to one card, but right now we have two cards. We have the Purple Health Savings Account card and we have this Teal Healthcare card. Some of you may have an orange and blue WageWorks card that is equal to the teal healthcare card. Um, and when your orange and blue card expires, you'll get a teal healthcare card. All right, so if you have that teal card or the orange and blue card, that is for either a, an FSA or an HRA. You cannot use that teal card to access health savings account funds. And if you only have an FSA and an HRA, it's all good, you'll have one card. You can use it for any of those expense types, medical, pharmacy, behavioral health, dental, vision, if you happen to have both an FSA and an HRA, your FSA will always pay first because it's use it or lose it. Where it gets a little confusing is if you have that FSA or an old HRA balance and you also elect an HSA, and then you'll get two cards. And what you'll do is you'll use your purple card for the medical, pharmacy, and behavioral health expenses and your teal card for dental and vision expenses until you have reached this minimum IRS deductible, um, which is $1,400 if you are single coverage and $2,800 if you cover family. Now, mind you, those deductibles do not match our plan deductibles. Those are the IRS deductibles. But once you have that much in out-of-pocket expenses, you can let Health Equity know and they will let you use your TEAL card for all expenses, which is nice because if you have the, the FSA money, that's use it or lose it, you're gonna wanna use it once you hit those dollar amounts. What if you have a purple card? If you only have an HSA and you don't have a leftover HRA and you don't have a, a flexible spending account, you will just have a purple card. You can use it for everything. You can use it for medical, pharmacy, behavioral health, dental, and vision. It's only when you end up with both the HSA card and the FSA card um, that you have to think about which card to use. Um, and remember, the purple card is for medical, pharmacy, and behavioral health. And I actually usually, my husband is extremely intelligent, but he has trouble remembering which card to use sometimes, understandably so. And so I write in Sharpie what he's supposed to use it for. Um, so I'm like, here you go, use the purple card for this, use the, um, use the teal card for this. So purple for medical, pharmacy, and behavioral health, teal for dental and vision. And then once you reach that IRS minimum deductible, then you can submit your information to health equity, and then you can use your teal card for everything. 
And then somebody asked about the dependent care account. So the dependent care account does not use the cards, um, but it is available for people who pay for daycare expenses for children or adult dependents. And I believe they have to be 12, under 12 um, in order for you to be able to use the dependent care expense on it. It might be 12 and under. So um, if you have a child who is 12 or turning 12, make sure you take a look at our documents. Um, you can contribute up to $5,000 um, to the dependent care account, and then you use that to basically pay yourself back for daycare expenses. All right, let's see if we have any other questions about reimbursement accounts here. So I, yeah, I acknowledge the multiple cards are confusing. I'm sorry about that. We are committed to making that easier for you through educational opportunities, as well as eventually hopefully getting back to one card. Um, if you forget to use your TL card for your dental and vision expenses, can you still submit the claims? You absolutely can. So you would submit the claims that you haven't been reimbursed for to Health Equity, and you can tell them that you, they, you want them to pay you out of your FSA. And the reimbursement forms um, are, you can either log in, the easiest way to do this is to log into Health Equity. So remember, benefits access is your one-stop shop for everything Westpath benefits related. Um, so you go, if you log into benefits access and click on health, there's a reimbursement accounts link and you can click there, it'll take you right to Health Equity and you can submit your claims there. But if you're a form person, you can also go to benefits access and click on plan details. It'll take you to a page with, with, it says a reference center and it has all sorts of information. Click on reimbursement accounts and then there's claim forms down there. Remember, it's always easier to submit directly through Health Equity online. Were we, were we, we were allowed to roll over 500 at the end of the year for the FSA, is that still available? So yes, it's actually $550 now. Um, so from 22 into 23, you can roll over up to $550. For 2020 into 2021 and 2021 into 2022, we actually adopted the rule, the special rules related to the COVID um, pandemic, and you can roll over anything you have in your FSA, in your healthcare FSA into 2022. So you don't have to worry about losing money in 2022. We know that not everybody has been able to get all the care that they planned in 2021. All right, we are finishing up. Um, and so I just wanted to talk a little bit about your dental plan options. Um, we have three dental plans to choose from. Alex knows your dental plans. Um, and the one thing I wanna point out is that the dental HMO has a different network than the, the two PPO plans. And so um, if you do wanna make sure you have an in-network dentist for the HMO, there are no out-of-network benefits in the dental HMO. So if you don't have a network or dentist um, that you're willing to go to, then you shouldn't pick the dental HMO. Um, the, the two PPO plans, um, they have the same benefit for in-network benefits, but if you choose the plain PPO, the out-of-network benefits are lower. If you choose one of the PPO plans, you won't get mailed a card. You just you can either pull it up on their the Cigna app, or you can um, you can have your dentist call Cigna to verify benefits. If you do choose the DHMO, you will get a card mailed to you, and it will have your primary care dentist's name on the card. We have three vision plans. One of them is a zero dollar plan, so please don't waive vision. We will give you at least our exam coverage for no additional cost. Um, but if you do want to pay more, you can get either the full service or premier and have money to pay for glasses and contacts. And there isn't a card for VSP benefits. You just print out your benefits online or the VSP, especially if you go to a VSP provider, they are great at looking you up. All right, so we are nearing the end of our time together. Just to reiterate, I wanted to remind you, November 3rd through November 18th, that is the time, that is annual election. That is when you're gonna make your 22 elections, 2022 elections. So make sure you use Alex, and then make sure that you remember that Alex doesn't constitute making an election. So go back in and make your elections, start at benefits access, choose which plans you wanna be in, contribute to health accounts, if it's your first year in an HSA plan, make sure you accept the terms and conditions of the plan. Some, some final tips for you. Don't assume that the plan you're in today is the best plan for you. Alex can help you weigh that. Um, 
don't underestimate the benefit of health accounts, both the money that we put in the account for you and the money that you're able to contribute yourself. And remember, there is no best plan. Everyone asks us all the time, which one's the best plan? That's the one I want. There is no best plan. There's only which plan is the best for you. And that's the one we want you to pick. All right, I'm going to see, I don't see any other questions. Oh yes, I have. Um, only members have access to benefits access. What can spouses do? Um, your, your plan sponsor will have um, your direct Alex URL. So your plan sponsor can give you the Alex URL, or if you have the primary participant login can give you the Alex URL, but the primary participant does need to make the election, not the spouses. Um, the maximum FSA contribution right now, I believe, is, is $2,700. Um, the IRS likes to change that like a day before annual election, so we'll keep you posted if that changes. Um, my dentist loves my HSA card, and I don't have to wait six months between cleanings when it's inconvenient. I think that's a good thing, so that's a good comment. All right. Well, that is all our questions for today. Um, I thank you guys so much for taking time. And for those of you who watch this as a recording, um, you know, feel free to reach out to Westpath or your plan sponsor or our annual election support center if you have questions that aren't answered in this webinar. Thank you.